Hey, what's going on guys? Brian here for today's tutorial. I'll be showing you guys how to utilize CocoaPods in your project. Now, a little bit of information regarding CocoaPods. It's essentially a dependency manager, or in other words, it's a system that allows you to install libraries or utilities that other developers out there made specifically for uh, Xcode or like projects built in Xcode. So anything with iOS, macOS, whatever whatever language, right? So for example, some developer out there may have created an extension to a UI label, right? It may have extra features that it doesn't already have, so you may want to use this feature, right? So you go on the CocoaPods website, you install the pod into your project, and you start using it, simple as that. The only thing is, if you go live with the app and you're using the pod that's created by the other developer, you have to put a credit uh, area for this developer in your app. But that's really simple to do, so yeah, let's begin. First things first, you're going to want to install CocoaPods into your computer. Okay, so all you gotta do for that is open up terminal, all right? Then you wanna type this command out, so sudo gem install CocoaPods. And that's it, that's all you need to do is to install CocoaPods or the system or the dependency manager for it, right? If you wanna look into more detail for, uh, about what this is actually doing, just simply hop on over to the CocoaPods website and it will show you a whole huge tutorial on how to actually install CocoaPods. Now, I'm not going to do it because I already installed it already, so, you yeah. know. Close it out. Let's open up a brand new Xcode project. I already have one over here because I have other monitors. I'm just going to drag this over right here. Blank single application. I'm just going to call this uh, Cocoa Pod Test, whatever, doesn't matter. Okay, let's open this up. All right. Now, when you're working with Cocoa Pods, right, when you first create a brand new project, right, this is not the project you're going to be, want to be working with. Now, this may be a little bit confusing, but trust me, it's really, it's really easy. Close out this project that you just opened up. You just need to create the whole file, the whole folder already. Now, and you need to open up terminal. Okay. Now you need to navigate to this folder. So this project is located on my desktop. So I need to navigate to desktop. So we do CD and the name of the area you want to go to. CD is short for change directory. So change directory to desktop. Now I'm on desktop and I'm going to simply type ls or short for list. And it's going to list all the things that's on my desktop. And it says CocoaBot test, which is a project I just created. Let's change it to that. And open that up and now we're inside this project file now before I go any further let me just say something um, I created a new project you may not want to create a new project you probably have a pre-existing app that you're already working on and you just want to install CocoaPods that's that's fine too all you gotta do if the project you already created you're good just close out that project like I just did now doing what I'm doing now navigate to the where your project is located uh, in my case is located on my desktop if it's located in your documents whatever just find it and Go into it. Now, once you're in the project, what you want to do is, after CocoaPods is installed already, all you got to do is type pod init. Now, what that's doing is it's initializing all the pod uh, necessities that CocoaPods needs. Now, you saw how it was doing before. It was waiting while it was installing. Now, it's done. Now, if you type ls again, it's going to show a new file that's been added to this project. Now, it's called pod file. Now, you want to open up pod file, so you do nano pod file. Nano is pretty much a, uh, is a text editor built in terminal. It's pretty much standard across all Macs. So next step is, this is where you uh, install all, all the pods you want. Now, you can have hundreds of pods if you want to use it in your apps. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter. So for example, you would do, for example, you would do a pod and uh, in between these single quotes, you just type in a name. So I'm going to show you how to install one pod uh, I have in mind. Really simple. So let's navigate to the CocoaPod website. I'm going to bring over a tab from the other screen. Okay, let's go to CocoaPods. All right, now we type in CocoaPods.org. This is the first thing that you will see, a huge search bar. And it says right here, type here to search my name, version, author, keyword, summary, or dependencies. What that means is you just type in whatever keyword and this CocoaPod website will filter out all the pods that match that name. So I already have one in mind. So I'm just going to search for active label. I used this previously in one of my apps uh, before. 
and it's really simple to use. Um, click on it. Okay, you can search for anyone, but in this case, I'm just going to work with Active Label. Now, when you work with a pod, right? It will show you all the information here, if it's documented, if it's tested, what language it is, when it was last released. And now this is important, the Swift version. Now if you're working with Swift, you're going to want to find a pod that's working with the latest version. Because if you find a pod, for example, that's version 2.0, and you're coding your app in 3.0, this pod won't work because it's outdated. And it's up to you to update all the pre-existing code, which may take a long time depending how big the pod is. And it also depends on your skill level because some pods are written quite advanced. So just try to find the latest version and you'll be set. And it also shows you how many downloads this pod has, how many apps is currently using it. And usually pods that have a lot of downloads are really good because that's, in this case, 95,000, that's a lot of downloads. So this, this pod is actually working. So. And plus, I just used it, so I know it's working. So, in order to install it, this pod should give you some instructions on how to install it. If not, let me try looking for it. If it doesn't show you how to install the pod, you, all you want to do is simply, right here at the bottom right, it says GitHub repo. Open up a new tab, and it should show you how to install it. Um, to install it right here. To install using Cocoa Pods, you just do this right here. I'm gonna show you real quick. Cartridge, it's it's a totally different thing. I'm not gonna show you that. This is a CocoaPod tutorial. So yeah. Go back to the terminal that you just have right here. This is open with nano pod file. Now you want to follow this along. Okay, follow what I'm doing. Just type pod active label or the name of the pod that you want. And just follow along. This is use frameworks, which in this case it is using frameworks, it's uncommented. Uh, in some cases, uh, use frameworks may be commented out, and what that in this case the hashtag comments out lines, so you want to remove that. Now you want you're going to want to save it. Now before that, let me just say something. It says right here, platform iOS 8.0. Now that's the version or the platform, right? Now in this case, I have platform iOS 9.0, and it's and it's commented out. In some cases, it won't matter at all. Like I will just go through it and it will work perfectly. In some cases, it may break. So if it does break, just go back and edit it. As simple as that. In this case, I'm not going to edit it because most of the time it will work. So now once you're done typing it out, you want to save it. In order to save this file, you're going to do Control O and then hit Enter to write the file or save it. And then Control X to exit this uh, text editor. Now you back out here. Now once that is done, you're going to want to do pod install. Now what that's going to do is pretty much it's going to install the pod that you've written in that, nano, in that pod file. So now it's going to install all the dependencies, the actual pod that you want. It's going to generate all the pods, uh, all the files that's needed. It should take less than a minute. If it takes longer than that, it's usually because the file is really big or you have a lot of pods already uh, waiting to be installed. So once that's done, you can do ls again to show all the files in there. So now there's more files in there. So now, what I was saying before, you're not going to be want to be working with the old project that you originally opened up before. You're going to be working with XE Workspace. Now, this is the project that contains pod or is connected to the pod, right? So let's open this up. CocoaPodTest.XE Workspace. Okay. Now, once that's opened up, now you have the actual project you have here, and you also have another file here, it's called pods. Now this will list all the pods that you have. Now in this tutorial, I'm just doing one pod, but in some of the apps you may have, you may have like up to like 20 pods. Like in, in apps that I work on, I have many pods all working together, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to use this pod now. Let me get rid of this, this receipt memory one because uh, we don't need that, that's redundant in this tutorial. So. Let's follow along with the tutorial for this, how to use it. It should show you how to use it. Uh, use this right here, import active label. Let's do that. Import active label. Now, when you install pods, and most of the time it will give you this error saying that it does not exist or there's no underlying module with, the, with that name, right? So another way to get around of that, you just gotta build it. You just gotta build it, get rid of the error, right? So command B, build it and the error should go away. 
Now, in some cases, the error will probably not go away. That has to do with the pod. The pod may be broken. There's something wrong with the pod. So that's not your fault. It's the pod's fault. Okay, just get that out there. Okay. See, now the error went away. Everything's good. Now we are ready to start writing the code for this pod. So I'm not going to type this out. I'm just going to copy it directly from this GitHub page. I'm going to put this in view the load. All right. Okay. Now it's giving me the error again. Sometimes it comes back, sometimes it doesn't. All right. I'm going to give this a frame. I'm just going to put this uh, randomly on screen. Let's just say 20, 40. Right. All right. And then the width will be same thing as the frame. So the, width, the width of the screen, subtracted by, I don't know, 40. And then the height, let's give it 200. No, nah, let's give it 400, doesn't really matter. Okay, now let's add this label to uh, the screen. No, not that one. View to add subview label. Now let's run this. Now I didn't actually explain what this pod does. Essentially what it does, it turns a plain old UI label or it extends a UI label to allow uh, the UI label to detect hashtags, uh, mentions, kind of like Instagram. When you scroll into Instagram, you see hashtags, that's pretty much a UI label. So the, what this pod does, it allows uh, the, the label to detect whether or not a hashtag was ran or a user handle was ran. So now let's open this up. Now, as you can see, it works perfectly. It, it's detecting the hashtag and it's also detecting the user handle. So in this case, we have uh, this pod has um, a feedback. So if you tap on the hashtag, it should bring up this message, success. You just tap the hashtag, hashtag. So let's click this. Oh, there we go. Success. You just tap the hashtag, hashtag. So yeah, that's the end of this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I will be pushing out more videos soon. I've just been very busy lately. Like and subscribe, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.